Hi everyone and welcome to a new Q&A video. I, it's been a long time since I've done one and you know the channel's been through a lot of changes over these few years. I thought it would be good to answer some questions that I've seen throughout my videos. I always look at my comments and a lot of people have asked questions about this, about that, and I thought it would be good to answer them directly rather than just answer them in the comments sections. Any plans to do a forgotten television video on Young Chronicles of Indiana Jones? Yes, I do actually want to do a FTV video on Young uh, Indiana Jones. I know I remember recording it many years ago on VHS. I don't have all the episodes. I just have to find out where it's streaming. I don't think it was ever released on DVD. I want to then watch them and do a proper review on the old series. Have you thought about renaming the channel ever since you stopped doing Power Rangers themed content? When I originally redesigned everything and went to these two other series that I'm working on now and got away from Power Rangers, originally I had thought, well, should I rename the channel because, you know, it's not PR focused anymore. But I said, no, really, why bother? You know, lots of people who make content don't have a name that resembles the show that they're doing. And at best, it would just be renamed to FTV Reviews. Are you going to do a What Went Wrong episode on Marvel movies in the late 2000s before Iron Man, the first Marvel Cinematic Universe film? That's not actually a bad idea. You know, a lot of the old Marvel films from the 90s, like the unreleased uh, Fantastic Four movie. Not a, every movie's bad, but yes, I can do videos on, like I said, Fantastic Four or the Nick Fury movie, and of course like X-Men 1 and 2, etc, etc. What type of content do you enjoy doing the most here, as in which has the most enjoyable process? Also, what's your favorite video topics? The fun that I have most on any of the videos is what's went wrong, because when I do those type of videos, I have to like figure out like what did the story go wrong? Because you know, when I watch a movie or a TV show and then I find out, oh yeah, this movie sucks or this TV show makes no sense, you know, I have, you have to think about like why did it suck? Why did it go bad? Did the characters like change all of a sudden? Did the plot make no sense? Are people jumping around because they need to get somewhere quicker? Like for example, um, Game of Thrones season eight. That's one of the obvious things that they did wrong in that season. And so yeah, those I think I find more interesting because I wanna see if I can fix the story without really changing what it, the premise was versus like completely altering the entire story to make it a, a better story in general. Could I fix it if I combine this, move this around, remove this character, add a character? My favorite video topics is if like, you know, someone breaks down uh, anything, a story, technology. Now, I like to see the process of someone f you're showing how something was made, who or what inspired you to want to make YouTube content. The original idea of me making YouTube videos was simply to help people out. Uh, when I created Ranger Review, it was there so that people would understand, okay, what are the changes to the toy? Because, you know, a lot of people like myself like a quality product. Bandai would be good some years, bad in others. Whether it was an issue from even Bandai Japan, like uh, the plastic connectors broke on this particular season. And I would like to try to warn people, there's always a positive and there's always negatives. Even in a technical side, there was a, one of these series I did on the channel where I repaired things. Uh, I, there were common things that always broke on a toy. And I, one of the goals of that series was to, you know, help to see like a way to fix them without getting too technical, try to like fix it with what you had, or try to say, okay, this is what's breaking. Could you figure out a way to deal with it? Once you said Fives was your favorite writer series, do you like the series? And which writer series is your favorite or least favorite? That's kind of a hard question, actually. Um, yeah, Fives was my very first Kamen Rider series. It was just like, okay, I've been watching Super Sentai since roughly 1999. I saw it raw, basically, from old bootleg VHS tapes. And I never bothered seeing Kamen Rider. I really didn't know about it until I think one of the Sentais had, you know, uh, they did one of those ads for their movies, and then they had Kamen Rider Ryuki with the ad. So I kept seeing that ad over and over and over again. So I, I knew it, that was the first time I saw Kamen Rider. And then I just, for years after that, I still didn't watch it. And I said, okay, I like Sentai. I'm going to eventually say I'm going to like Kamen Rider. I just literally just picked a random season. It wasn't because Fives was new. It was many, many years old. And I said, let me just pick. And I was like, wow, this show is actually really cool. 
the, the way it's different from Super Sentai, it's a little bit more deeper in stories, obviously, because it's for Senin audiences versus for Shonen. And also, the belt stuff. You know, the Kamen Rider specifically goes for belts rather than other gimmicks like braces and Super Sentai. So I was like, I love the tech. I, still to this day, Fives is my favorite belt, and I regret never getting a complete selection belt. Now, for my favorite Rider series, even though Fives was my first, it's not my favorite. I want to pick Double, but I also like O's. I really enjoyed the dynamic with Edgy and uh, Ankh, or I like you know, Philip and Shotaro's dynamic between the two of them. And it was kind of a nice refresh to Kamen Rider because, you know, after Decade did all the weird nonsense and alternate universes and not having actors, and then it was being 30 episodes, it was supposed to be shorter, so the writing was all over the place. Least favorite? Now, it's going to kind of be a cliche because usually people will pick Hibiki or Decade. Um, it's going to be Decade. The main issue I had, not because it was short, I actually like the story and all the characters and what they did through the different, you know, worlds and stuff and, you know, bridging and having all that, the funny moments and everyone making, you know, Orino Dikedo, that nonsense. The reason why I don't pick it over Hibiki because I did like the premise of Hibiki uh, even from the very beginning and it did get better during the retooling in the second half. So I don't hate it as much, even though it's vastly different from a traditional Kamen Rider series. But Decade annoyed me more because they, except for a few exceptions, they didn't get actors back. I consider the actors not the most important element of a show, but it's the second important thing. And if you are going to go back to an old series, it's look the actors, everything has to be the same. Because when you change the actor, that's not who I watched when I watched the original show. Yeah, you can make the argument of, oh, it's a different universe, it's gonna have a different thing, and this, and Hibiki was a kid, and that was weird. And then other times they would get the genuine actor back, but then they would be playing an alternate version. Like, you know, if it was an MCU movie being in an alternate reality, that type of thing. I thought that was stupid. It was very gimmicky. Gokaiger did it much better. If you were going to do some sort of special anniversary where you're like, oh, hey, we can bring back an old, you know, character for whatnot, do it right. Have you ever seen or been a fan of Ben 10? Yes, I've seen, oddly, Ben 10 before I even saw Avatar. And it, honestly, it was one of the few shows that I did watch on Cartoon Network when it originally aired. It doesn't matter, cartoon, live action. If you're a good show, quality is quality. And Ben 10 was quality. The original series is my favorite out of all of them. Everyone always says, you know, there's a certain point where Ben 10 got stupid. Usually it's Alien Force. For me, it was Omniverse, even though I didn't really care for Alien Force either, but Omniverse was the one where it was like, yeah, this is kind of getting ridiculous, and I hope you end the series. And they did. They did end the series, but then they ended up doing that stupid reboot, which I didn't even bother watching, because again, if you're going to just literally retell the original series of Ben 10, what's the point? Uh, this is the same problem with re remakes in general. It's like, again, yeah, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. It's just like you don't have any originality. If you put originality, you're just breaking the show. You might as well make a new show. Have you ever seen the series Thunderbirds, original or CG series? Yes, actually, I own the original series on Blu-ray. I've never seen the CG series because it was on streaming. But yeah, I enjoy Thunderbirds, the original 60 version. It doesn't matter if it's puppets. It doesn't matter if it's corny. It had fun adventure stories. It had that classic feel. And honestly, the puppets is a, such a unique way to do the show. It always stands out from any kind of stuff, even from the 60s. I wish it went on longer. That's like literally its only drawback. Have you watched the recent show, The Owl House? No, unfortunately, no, I never watched it. What are your thoughts on turning game shows into movies? That's a hard question, actually, because the potential could be good because, again, you know, like, you know, you can make virtually anything now. The idea of doing it, I'm not against, but at the same time, trying to make a live action show on Boggle or Monopoly. Monopoly could work. You can make it so that it's like, you know, the, the pieces are alive and they're stuck in this world. But then again, it's no longer the game. Because if you try to introduce the game elements of buying property in this, it would be very difficult to do. I mean, the closest you can do with Monopoly is if you have the Mr. Monopoly who's on the box be the main protagonist against, I don't know, a city that's corrupt. 
and you're trying to buy the properties away from the city in order to fix them and help people. That could be the closest you can get to working with it, but at the end of the day, that's not the game. It's, it's like Battleship. It's completely different compared to the actual board game Battleship and it involves aliens. I know the obvious reason why they do it is because, you know, having a known name gives it a better chance for people to watch it versus something original. Do you think you could ever return to making PR slash Toku videos again? This is a tricky way to answer the question. The reason why I don't make PR slash Super Sentai videos anymore, and it's not really, it, it, Kappa was initially why I did it, but you know, over time Kappa became more clear, they were more lenient on things, so I could have just continued. But what made me decide to not do it again is simply toys abuse of fair use. Well, I won't single toy out only, a loads of companies from you know, Paramount, Warner Brothers, they don't respect fair use in a lot of ways too. So if you ever see my videos when I'm reviewing something, there are times where I'll show clips or I'll have the uh, images really small. It's because what I'm doing is fair use and allowed to what you can do, but a lot of companies do not care. But when a company, you know, directly manually claims you, and you're, what you're doing is fair use, I just cannot stand it. I was around for 10 years doing these videos, and if you watched my way I did my videos, I tried my best to respect fair use. I went out of my way. Well, I would review PR and whatever was available here, but I, when Super Tentai wasn't available here on the DVDs at the time, I didn't cover them. I only covered you know, what I you know, what I could talk about, but I only stuck to the PR material. So then when the Super Sentai DVDs came out, I said, well, it's officially licensed here. I can now use it under fair use. I, that's how far I was trying to be respectful to Saban, Bandai, Hasbro, Toy, you know, and then loads of people had to deal with bull <laughs> copyright claims. Yeah, Hasbro had our back in some cases and they cleared them. The point is, they don't stop. You can clear your video. I've counterclaimed toy uh, copyright claims before, like the big Hasbro one that happened, but right before the COPPA stuff. I cleared them and got them removed. They would come back again. And not all the time, it could take years, but it will happen. The point is that if you are on YouTube for years, I've been doing this for 11 years, I've never done anything wrong, and I've defeated copyright claims from toy, Saban brands, whatnot, there should be a precedent that if you've been on this platform for that long, you've dealt with claims, that should send the message to the company, gee, maybe we shouldn't do these stupid claims and leave them alone because I'm, helping you to a degree. I'm showing your content and how good it is or even bad. If I was creating a show and I saw criticism, I want to see the good and bad. Tell me that it's crap and tell me why it's crap. I want to fix it. I don't want, I'm not that type of guy where it's like, oh yeah, you made it some BS criticism. I don't agree with you. Delete, block, ban, whatever you want to say. That's how I see it when a company does this. It's like, you don't want the free advertisement and you're just being horrible to your fan base. So I stopped making the content. Now, would I come back to PR Super Sentai? There is one way that I would come back. Now, if I do, I'm not going to stop what went wrong and forgotten television. The only way I would do it is if that rumor of Hasbro dropping Super Sentai, the Super Sentai footage completely, PR will be pure Power Rangers, pure concept and everything built from America's scripts, productions, whatnot. Then Toy is not involved anymore. Ever think of doing a what went wrong with Stargate Universe? Ah, uh, yes, I have of course thought of that many a times. Now, I, I know I wrote down that I would never do Stargate Universe, and the reason why I say things like that is because I don't own it. The only way I would ever do it is if my friend, one of my friends, would be willing to purchase Stargate Universe and then give me his copies. I don't want to support a company that screws up a series because Stargate Universe is bad very bad where I 
didn't want to own it. I didn't want to watch it after the first time I saw it. And I watched all three series of Stargates in a row. I was not a fan of this uh, franchise when it was coming out. I was like, nope, this series is blatantly bad, but I am going to re be reviewing uh, Stargate Atlantis because there was a lot of problems in that series. When did you start collecting? What drove you to do it? And what do people think of your collection when you mention it? When did I start collecting? If we're just talking about PR and not like in general, um, but the earliest I can remember collecting it was during Lost Galaxy. Um, back in the MMPR days, all the way through Turbo, I, of course I liked the toys, but at the same time, I wasn't like, I didn't want them that badly. I had some of the older figures, like I think I had the Red Ranger figure with the Thunder Bikes. That was like literally the only toy of Power Rangers I owned from MMPR all the way up to Turbo. In 97, what happened was they had released the uh, reissued Super Zeo Megazord. Remember, I had also quit Power Rangers with uh, Turbo. When I saw the second time around of Lost Galaxy, and then I had gone back to watch In Space, and I said, wow, they actually fixed the series because Turbo turned me off. That was the last show I had watched for nearly two years. So then, while luckily Lost Galaxy was still airing because they just reran the episodes, I got the uh, Super Zeo Megazord. I didn't get anything else from Lost Galaxy at the time because everything was, uh, except for the Transmorpher. It was the Magnamorpher, Transmorpher, and the Super Galactic Megazord I got as my first like personal collection of Power Rangers where I said, you know what? This series redeemed itself. It made really good content. I want to own the series again. I didn't get everything. There was always something I was missing from each series. Like I said, in the Lost Galaxy line, I didn't actually own any of the Zords or weapons. Mainly the weapons mainly because it runs into the same problem. They're too small. They never look realistic enough, so I usually avoid the weapons. Morphers I got because they were still there, luckily. And the same process went through Life Speed, Time Force, etc., etc., etc. But then at that point, I think I had start. I think it was uh, Dino Thunder was the time where I said, you know what, I'm going to go get the Japanese material because they're much more better. What do people think of my collection when you mention it? I really don't mention it, and if you see in my room, I really don't have a place to actually put anything. So a lot of times, all my stuff is just stuck in storage, and if I, you know, get one thing out... And a lot of times, people don't even realize it's a Power Rangers thing. They'll just think it's just from other some other series, like uh, Giganto from uh, Kyuger. People kind of sometimes think it's from um, Gundam. What is your favorite Blu-ray slash Blu-ray set you have ever gotten? That has to go to the Lord of the Rings DVD slash Blu-ray set. Well, one, I love Lord of the Rings. But two, the amount of effort that went into the uh, bonus features. One thing that makes me really appreciate a series is when you pour in like tons and tons of bonus features, especially when they're very honest. So if they're like a perfect example would be Alien 3. That movie was a complete mess. The bonus features were very honest with what happened behind the scenes. The story wasn't going to be the greatest thing in the world either because they were working from Alien 2, which was phenomenal. And then you're trying to like, what the hell do we do with the third one? It was never going to be the best thing. But screwing that director and then releasing a producer's cut because the director didn't even want to come back to you know clear a director's cut lord of the rings is very honest as showing how hard it was to do their production them being very very scared of screwing it up being faithful as much as possible to the books do you know of this cartoon named regular show if so can you please review it it has eight seasons yes i do know regular show it's one of my favorite series Although I haven't seen the entire series, I saw most of it. The only thing I really haven't seen was season seven, eight, and the movie. But I saw pretty much everything. And I do own the first two seasons because they were released on Blu-ray. And I know that Australia released all eight seasons on DVD. Now, the only reason why I don't review it is because it doesn't fit into any of the things that I do. It doesn't fit into what went wrong. I mean, maybe a particular episode would be, you know, it could fit into it. But I usually don't want to do series that are majorly good. And it's not a forgotten TV because it's brand new. Or I would have to make a completely new thing where I just review, you know, anything that I would want. Now, I'm not against that, but because I'm doing already, you know, two different shows and whatnot... 
I don't want to do a third one. So not to say I never review it, but it's just not something I would do currently. Do you only review shows and movies if you have a physical copy? Very good question, because it probably confuses everyone all the time. No. If uh, I, I enjoy a series, whether it's uh, physically or digitally, I will review it. Now, most of the time, again, because the series is either new, or it's not bad, I don't review it. But yeah, um, being only a, having only a physical copy will not deter me. There's many shows that I've watched, like Stranger Things, where... I only, you know, you have to watch it from Netflix or like Doro Hidoro. That's only on Netflix. There's no physical copy in the U.S. Since I don't care about streaming services in general, what I do is if there's a show that I like watching, I pay for the month. I watch the series, download the series, cancel the subscription and make my own Blu-rays. You know, they don't want to make a physical copy where I pay 45 bucks, 50 bucks in taxes. Uh, you know, I'll just spend the eight bucks and make my own Blu-rays myself. I'm still supporting the company, and I will get my physical copy that way. I just prefer physical copies because I have more control over that. You know, I can just rip the episode or rip the movie, and I can do a proper review instead of relying on poor quality, crappy quality, whatnot. What's your favorite horror movie? What's your favorite cartoon character? Both questions are very hard. Um, I like a ton of horror movies. Obviously, that kind of makes sense because I'm a fan of Sam Raimi's stuff from Hercules, all his horror movies. Uh, I like even the bad ones. Like, I reviewed those really bad sci-fi movies. Those are so bad, but then I still watch them because it's just like, yep, yeah, I just want to see really crummy horror movies. If I really had to pick one right off the top of my head right now, um, Halloween 1. The original Halloween, not the remake and not the later ones because it just become this convoluted mess of different backstories or in the third movie's case, it completely changes the story. But then you have the, re the remakes, which don't really follow the thing in the second film. And then you have the newer ones now with Jamie Lee Curtis, which completely ignores movies two through se seven. Favorite cartoon character? Oh my god, that, that is extremely difficult to answer because there's so many characters that I like from so many different eras of cartoons. Stories like Batman the Animated Series or Gargoyles or X-Men 92. Uh, I love loads of characters in those series, but then also I love the fun, goofy shows like Dennis the Menace, um, you know, Scooby-Doo, uh, you know, Mega Man, you know, um, Beautiful Joe, you know, from Avatar, Korra, uh, Pokemon. I mean, I won't say it's the favorite, but I will say it's one of my favorite. Probably going to be very weird choice to people. Beast from X-Men 92. I always liked the, uh, the, uh, the character type of very strong-willed, very intelligent, but also can be, you know, aggressive. Like, you know, they're not like meager. If you're going to screw up my friends, I'm going to deal with you. But I also like tons of other characters like Robin and Batman, the animated series, you know, I really like that version because it's just, you know, he's that very upbeat kid who's just always trying to, you know, he does the right thing. He went through this horrible past, you know, from Tony Zuko. Then you had all, you know, the fun times were like in like the Christmas episodes or just, you know, that really close friendship slash father and son dynamic. Well, I know you won't be talking about PR and Super Sentai anymore, thanks to Kappa, but what were your full thoughts on Beast Morphers since it ended, and what do you think of Dino Fury so far? Well, Dino Fury, I don't want to say because i only seen a few episodes from it. I have three or four at most. I'm trying to catch back up on PR and Super Sentai in general because um, Beast Morphers, uh, I didn't watch all of it while it was originally airing because from Dino Charge to New Steel, it was kind of like, oh my god, they're screwing this up and it's hopeless. But I had finally watched Beast Morphers not too long ago, all the way through, and I was like, they finally got a season right. Even though, you know, every I will always say Dino Charge season one is a good season. The second season is what ruins it. But all the other Neo Saban seasons are from meager to downright awful. Beast Morphers, for me, they fixed virtually everything I had a problem with. Okay, you could still nitpick certain things like Betty and uh, Ben. I like them, but I will admit they were still rough, but they got better through the rest, like the second half of the series. And they did keep them to the side a little bit more. That's probably what helped, but they did overall 
balance them. I'm still mad that that whole joke with the the, the, the huge tree that didn't they didn't keep it going because they just wanted to keep reusing the stock footage. But one of the things I was really surprised with in Beast Morphers was steel. The one thing that um, Go Busters did wrong was the whole lack of J. They didn't really use them. There was yeah they had one or two focus episodes on him or he was a part of an episode featured with Yoko or Yuji or Jin. But he really had no presence. When Beast Morphers used to steal, I was worried because they made him half-brothers. And he became a really good character because also he was being very funny, almost like Ben and Betty, but they never crossed the line with him. He was spot on. There were lots of Beast Morphers episodes that were um, like they tackled certain things that I was surprised on, like blackmail. Uh, what's her face? Uh, I was like, oh, they actually won here. Cool. When you watch Beast Morphers and Go Busters, Beast Morphers had a very, very hard time to adapt the footage because, you know, what they had to do is they, they took stuff from the end of Go Busters, put it in the beginning. They had to rework tons and tons of material that they couldn't use, and they had to film a lot of new stuff. It was very complicated. And it, Beast Morphers is now a perfect example of adapting something that you would think is virtually impossible. Because a lot of people said they wouldn't adapt uh, Go Busters. That's a poor excuse. You can adapt any of the Super Sentai seasons, including things like Tokyujer, if you really wanted to. Because at the end of the day, if Power Rangers was still running as the same year-long season and never had any breaks, like it never got canceled and it was always running through, they would have had to adapt Tokyujer because that was the next season in line. They had nothing else. They would have done it. And I know they could easily come up with an original story to work with it, but again, it comes down to profits. Is it worth it? But I always said, Beast Morphers is a perfect modern example of adapting a very complicated Super Sentai season that didn't have a lot of stuff they could use into something very good. Even though I can still complain about some things like, you know, Roxy, you know, the good version of those characters, they kind of got sidelined. But again, I understand why, because you have to have the actor do both roles and it would be very time consuming. And for our final question, does your number one favorite Sentai series remain Shinkenger or has it changed since you last made that video on your top 10 favorite Sentai series? First thing, yes. Ultimately, you know, again, Hurricanger is my, you know, close second. And, you know, the other seasons, you know, like Kyoryujiro, I do like Kyoryujiro, even though there's a lot of people that don't. Blue Soldier, Kira Maijer, you know, Lupin, Pat, whatever. What it comes down to with Shinkenger with me is the characters. They were perfect. The twist they did with Shinken Red being a fake, um, Kaoru coming in, Gokaiju came close, Hurricane comes close when it comes to characters, but no one really has surpassed, for now, has surpassed Shinken Also, do you ever plan on doing a room tour? Well, there's really, as you can see, there's really nothing for me to tour. I mean, the, I did a recent video of all my Blu-ray and DVD collections, and that's literally it. The only thing I really haven't seen is my computer setup, which you can kind of see through these videos now. Standard bed, standard dresser, boring room. And my filming area is just, you know, a storage space. And it's not set up all the time. It, it gets put away after every video and I have to take it out. So, I mean, I've shown photos of how I've set it up. The closest you can get to tours would be, you know, the videos on my video game collection, my comic collection, Super Sentai collection. So thanks again for watching the video. I hope I answered everything pretty good and see you on the next video.